Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Today, I'm going to show you how I do jump runs in Season of Discovery. This is doable by any range class for sure. I used to do jump runs back in the day on my Warrior with Diamond Flask, so I'm pretty confident you can do this too. What are jump runs? Jump runs are a gold farm in Dire Mall East. They are called jump runs because you find yourself jumping down a lot in this run. Why do this farm though? Well, there are quite a lot of valuable items here. The main reason people do jump runs is for arcane crystals. At the end of the run, you will find two to three rich thorium veins every reset. Thorium ore, arcane crystals, and some of the other gems from rich thorium veins sells very well. Not only is thorium ore used for engineering and blacksmithing, but it's also used to craft armor pots. Arcane crystals are used to make arcanite bars. To craft Thunder Fury, you need 100 bars. To craft Hand of Rag, you need 50. Arcanite bars are also used in the 0.5 tier set chain. So yeah, rich thorium veins have value. If you're going to barter with this farm, I highly recommend you are a miner for this. I am also enchanting for this farm, as there are a lot of good BOP greens and blues the bosses drop that can be disenchanted. Right now, Greater Eternal Essences sell very well, and you get quite a few when doing this. The satyrs you kill can drop Felcloth. Hydra Spawn can drop Essence of Water. There are also herbs here that sell very well. A lot of people like to do herbing and mining for this farm, but I went with mining and chanting. Personal Preference Lastly, we have the Dire Mall Class Books. These can be looted from Dusty Tombs, which there are four locations of in Dire Mall East. They have a chance to drop the epic book that gives Kel Sarar an amazing tanking sword. So yeah, a lot of gold to be made here. Here is my spec. I choose to do it as fire, but you can really do this as any spec. Here are the runes I use for mage as well. Really though, all you need for this farm is range attacks and you can do this just fine. Start your run by jumping down from the top. Avoid these patrols on the left and right. You want to avoid these pods, as they can spawn mobs or a poison cloud. They also have a chance to be lootable, where you can get a thornling seed. For this part, we are playing Frogger. These trees are very easy to avoid when you learn their patrol routes. There are quite a few safe spots to stand, and you do not need Blink to avoid them. Our first two dusty tomes are in this room. You can find one here to the left, and one over here in the back right. Check these spots each run. You can loot them without fighting anything. Just watch the patrols. Proceed forward and once you get to this spot, you can run into your first patrol. There are these stealth satyrs, and you will more than likely need to kill three of them. They have a very annoying poison slow, but it's a melee attack. Kite them and avoid getting hit. These mobs can drop fell cloth, so they're worth killing. Here we are at Hydro Spawn. You can choose to skip this boss because he can be annoying and hard. If you have slow kill times or are prioring arcane crystals, he is not needed to be killed. He can drop essence of water though, which sell nice, so I usually kill him. Pull him when he's in the back of the room and then jump to the high ground here. Stay close to the pillar and you'll be able to avoid the mobs on both sides. You will be able to juggle Hydra Spawn here. He will cast Massive Geyser, which will blast you into the air. You can line aside it behind this pillar, which is really the entire fight. At 50% he spawns two adds. I like to use Living Flame when they are spawning to kill them quickly. They are annoying and can knock you around. They have very low HP though, so kill them fast. As a mage, I choose to not use Living Bomb on this fight. His pathing can be frustrating as you can see here. Living Bomb can aggro the imps, so I just avoid using it.
Once dead, or if you choose to skip him, proceed forward and we will find our next satyr here. This one patrols around the big room with Hydra spawn. You can sometimes avoid him. I always try and find him and kill him though, because sometimes he'll sneak up on you when you're fighting another one. The last satyr patrol is in this final hallway here. Zebram is much easier to kill than Hydra spawn, and he is required to do the jump runs. This juggle is very simple. Use this broken pillar to line aside his cast. You really, really want to avoid sacrifice. It's basically a death sentence. You can ice block out of it and PvP trinket out of it. But really just avoid getting hit by it. There isn't much to talk about here. It's a really simple juggle that just takes practice. Jump up on the ledge and then jump back down. Very easy. Don't get greedy with your damage. If you see him casting, stop what you're doing and line of sight him. This fight I do use Living Bomb on, but only when I'm juggling him close. It can hit the guys in the back, so be careful. Once he's dead, we check for our next Dusty Tomb. It can spawn up here on the platform. Jump down, and we can go talk to the tree to open the door. Playing Frogger and avoiding the trees. Once the tree gets to the door, he will open it for you, but unfortunately, he dies. Head down this path, and then we're going to the final boss. If you see one of these big patrols, just wait for him to pass. Run over to this rock and jump onto the ledge. And then jump down onto this pillar, and then hop down to the lower ground. Right here is our last dusty tome. Alright, this boss is tricky if it's your first time doing it. He has three forms. Wolf form, which he has a bleed that slows you. It's a melee attack. Tree form, which has a melee knockup and a heal over time. And his human form, which is by far the most dangerous and the hardest part of this fight. He casts two very devastating spells on us, but you can survive it. First, he casts Wither, which does a lot of single target damage that puts a big dot on you. The next spell he casts is Enervate, which is a mana drain. When the human form is up, I like to move back as far as I can making him have to get as close to me as possible before casting. Once he's close, I jump down to the low ground and get ready to line aside him with this pillar. I'll then bait his cast out and line aside him until he swaps forms. Once he's in tree or wolf, I just pump as much damage into him as I can. Jump from the rock to the ledge over and over. We do not kill this boss, we only get him to 50%. Once 50% happens, the door to the back exit opens, and a bunch of little imps run out. I like to juggle a bit until all the imps are closer to the boss. I then jump off the ledge and run over to this safe spot. This will reset the boss and the imps. Now the annoying bit here is the imps and the plants are leashed together. The boss will reset, but the imps will chain aggro onto you. You will need to jump down and AoE the imps kill them, and then get back onto the ledge before the plants get to you. If the plants get to you, you're gonna die. If you are struggling killing the imps, there is another solution. Once you aggro drop and leave combat, you spam your invis potion before the imps aggro back onto you. You can invis pot and run around the corner, avoiding killing the imps at all. Invis potions are really cheap, so if you're really struggling with this part, just use invis potions. You can then claim your rich thorium. Once done, you can just run out this back door. This is a very easy farm and gets 5 lockouts done in an hour if I'm skipping Hydro Spawn. I am making very good gold doing this, and I hope this guide helps you out as well. I will be ending this video with a full clear run in case you want to see everything I do. If you like this video, please subscribe. Take care and good luck in Phase 4, boys.